Hi class, today we're going to take a look at the operations with positive and negative numbers. And as we deal with those, there's going to be a definition of subtraction that's going to be extremely important for us. It will help us with adding and subtracting uh, positive and negative numbers, and later on when we simplify expressions, it will help us again. Now, we're going to need to use this definition of subtraction in order to change our expression slightly, which will allow us to look at our problems as a way of thinking about the numbers rather than using all the rules that are in your textbook. I'm going to simplify adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers into a way of thinking for you that will take care of all the rules that are in your textbook um, for that. And then I will use a different way of thinking to summarize everything for multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers. So all the rules that you see in your textbook, we're going to kind of summarize in this video into two different ways of thinking. Before we get into that, let's take a look at this definition of subtraction that we're going to have to apply to all our problems in order to use our way of thinking about positive and negative numbers. And our definition of subtraction is that subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. So the opposite of a positive number is a negative number. The opposite of a negative number is a positive number. Now let's take a look at how this is going to be used. Let's say that you have 7 minus 5. Right now this is subtraction and this 5 is positive. What we're going to do is apply this definition by changing this subtraction to adding and we're going to change the sign of the number directly after it, which is the 5, to the opposite of what it is. And the opposite of a positive 5 is a negative 5. So it's often helpful to do this in a different color. I'm going to use red. The subtraction is going to change to a positive, and the opposite of the number directly after it is a negative. Because the 5 was positive, it is now negative. Notice that what we have now is 5 plus negative 5. That is actually the exact same thing that we would get if we did 5 minus, or 7 minus 5. 7 minus 5 is 2. Now, let's look at the 7 plus a negative 5. What I want you to think of when you're adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers is I want you to think money. Everybody's used to dealing with money. Positive numbers is money that you have or money that you earned. Negative numbers is money that you owe or money that you're spending. So we can think of this five plus or seven plus a negative five as you have seven dollars, you would like to spend five. That's going to leave you with two dollars left over. And since you have the two dollars, the two is positive. Notice that both ways up here we got the same answer. And it might be just as easy to do this as it is to do this for this particular problem. But let's take a look at another n problem where the thinking money is going to be extremely helpful. Let's say that you have 25 minus 32. If we first apply this definition of subtraction, this subtraction right here is going to change to adding the opposite of a positive 32, which is a negative 32. So again, do this in a different color so you can see that it happened. This will be plus, and this will become negative because that's the opposite of what it was, which was positive. Now we're going to think money. You have $25 and you would like to spend 32. There's a little bit of a problem with that. You are going to be short $7, which means you're going to have to charge $7 in a credit card, or you're going to be um, owing somebody $7. Since you are short $7, that means your answer is negative 7, because you will owe that $7 to somebody else. Notice that when we think about money, something that we're used to thinking about, it makes it much easier to determine whether this final answer here is positive or negative. 
Now let's take a look at a problem that's a little bit longer. How about 40 minus 52 minus negative 5. Now there's a lot of subtraction in this one and we're going to have to apply that definition of subtraction. The first subtraction I see is right here and this here is a subtraction which we're going to change to positive and then we have to look at the number right after it which is a positive 52. The opposite of a positive 52 is a negative 52. So this will become plus negative 52. Now let's go to the next subtraction. This subtraction is going to change to addition and then the number directly after it, which is a negative 5, needs to change to the opposite of what it is. And the opposite of a negative 5 is a positive 5. So this becomes plus positive 5. Notice that the two negatives here ended up making a positive. Now we can think about money as we do our problem. Working from left to right, you have $40. You would like to spend 52 there's a little bit of a problem with that. You are going to owe somebody $12, which makes that a negative 12. Now what we're going to do is carry down the rest of the problem because we haven't done anything with it, and then take a look at what's left over here. We owe somebody $12. We only have 5. That means we're still going to owe somebody $7. So negative 12 plus 5 ends up being negative 7. So that pretty much sums up adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. You just want to think about money and that helps you through your problem. Now when you are multiplying and dividing we have a different way of thinking. When we're multiplying and dividing we want to think odd or even. Now, we're not thinking about whether the numbers are odd or even. What we're thinking about is how many negative symbols do we have? And is the number of negative symbols odd or even? So if you have an odd number of negative symbols, and the key here is you're looking for the symbols, then that's going to give you a negative answer. If you have an even number of negative symbols, and the key is symbols, that's going to be a positive answer. Now, this is only for multiplying and dividing. This is not something you want to use when you're adding and subtracting. When you're adding and subtracting, you're going to be thinking money. But when you're multiplying or dividing, you're going to be thinking odd or even in terms of the number of negative symbols you have. And this is when that's your only operation is either multiply or divide. Now, let's take a look at a problem and I'll show you kind of in another way why this actually works. Let's say you have negative 2 times negative 3. We are multiplying these two numbers, so we want to think odd or even. And if we count up the number of negative symbols, there's one here and another one here, so there's two of them. So according to our way of thinking, two negative symbols is an even number of negative symbols, so that will give us a positive answer. So that means that this is going to be a positive number. Now we can just look at the numbers and say 2 times 3 is 6, because we know the answer is going to be positive. Now, another way to look at this is having new two negatives in a multiplication problem is very similar to if you have an English sentence and you're reading the English sentence and there's two negatives in it, they cancel each other out. So if you're reading a sentence and it says you, you do not not have something, that means that you do actually have it, which is a positive. The same thing is happening here. If you read an English sentence and you have an odd number of negative 
um, words within the sentence, then it means that the answer is going to be negative. So if you say that I do not have to go somewhere, that means that you are not going to have to go somewhere, which is like a negative value. If you, or depending on how you're looking at it, it could be positive. But if you say I am not going to not have to do this, that means you are going to have to do that which is a positive. Same kind of thing is happening here. If even number of negatives cancel each other out, odd number of negatives make it so you have the negative of whatever's in the situation. Now let's take a look at another one where we're multiplying. Let's say that we're multiplying three values. Let's say we have negative four times five times negative six. If I count up the number of negatives, I have one, two negatives within this entire thing, even though there are three numbers. That means my answer is positive. So now I can go from left to right and multiply. Four times five is twenty, and twenty times six is a hundred and twenty. So I know I'm going to have a positive hundred and twenty. However, if I change this problem so that this five was negative, and then count up my negative symbols. There's one, two, three of them now. Since there's three of them and three is an odd number of them, that makes this answer a negative 120 instead of a positive 120. Notice we just multiply the same numbers, we just know whether it's going to be positive or negative. Now let's take a look at a division problem. Let's say that you're going to take negative 55 and divided by negative 5. Notice that in this problem you have one, two negatives. Two negatives is an even number of negatives, so the answer is going to be positive and when you divide 55 by 5 you get 11, so the answer is positive 11. However, if I were to take, say, the negative away from the 55 here, that leaves us with only one negative, and one is an odd number, so that would make the answer here negative 11 instead. So all you have to do is count up the number of even, or number of negative symbols and find out if it's even or odd to determine if your answer is going to be negative or positive. Now remember that the two ways of thinking work only whether you're in addition and subtraction or multiplication and division. So to summarize, if you're in addition and subtraction, you want to think money. And if you're in multiplication or division, you want to think odd or even. And be careful to keep those two things separate.